there's no shame in wanting to boost your libido a bit, all right? It's part of life. The fact is, sometimes life gets the best of us. Stress, diet, you name it, it all breaks us down. So I'm gonna give you a bunch of different foods that you can use that are scientifically proven to help you out with your libido. Okay? Whether you are low carb, fasting, or not, it doesn't matter, these foods are going to help you out. So we're gonna break them all down, give you some tips, I'm also gonna tell you where you can usually get these. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and pretty much the rest of the week too. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click on that little bell, and that's gonna turn on notifications for you. And I really ask you to do that because it's gonna make sure that you see whenever I go live or post new videos. Okay, so I wanna start this off with just a general thing that you can do to help boost your libido, okay? Overall, we have to look at the big picture. And this video is gonna break it down for men and women, okay? The tips that I'm gonna give you work for both. Some of them are specifically for men and some are specifically for women, but overall, we're gonna have both. The general thing is you do want to reduce your carbohydrate consumption. Now, before you turn off this video and thinking that it's just a keto preach, it's not, okay? The fact is it's the absence of carbohydrates, the absence of the insulin that does allow the hormones to do their job a little bit more. So let me reference a couple of studies really quick. Okay, on the male side, the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition published a study, took a look at 26 men. These 26 men, they divided into two groups over the course of 11 weeks. One group went on a very low carb diet and another group went on a standard Western American diet. So it was like just higher carb. Well, what they found at the end of 11 weeks was that the testosterone levels in the men that were on the lower carbohydrate diet had increased 118 nanograms per deciliter. That is a huge increase in testosterone. The group that was on the higher carb diet actually had a decrease of 36 nanograms per deciliter. Okay, so what that means is it's usually the insulin that is blunting the overall production. So I'm not saying you have to go keto. I'm just saying if you do reduce carbs, you do free up some more of that availability, at least as a male, right? So it doesn't matter, just be conscious of that. Now on the female side, there was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition Metabolism. This study took a look at 11 participants that had PCOS. Now polycystic ovarian syndrome is uh, used as an example because it's a radical disruption of female hormones and we can get a, a, clear, a clearer picture painted for us, right? So what this study looked at was if these women went on a lower carb diet, what would happen? Well, they found that when they went on a low carb diet, they had reduced their testosterone levels by 22%. Now, mind you, for females, we want a little bit of a reduction of testosterone. But more importantly, they found that their follicle stimulating hormone and their luteinizing hormone levels balanced out. Some were even able to get pregnant that weren't able to get pregnant because their hormones balanced out so much. Now, additionally, there was a drastic reduction in insulin, 54%. So what they found here is the same kind of thing with the men. It's the hyperinsulinemia, the high levels of insulin that were messing these people up. When the insulin came down, things balanced out. So again, doesn't need to be keto, okay? But I am saying it does make a difference. So without further ado, let's get into the foods that you can eat. Number one is one that you've probably heard of before, no surprise, maca root. Okay, maca is simple. It's an adaptogenic root. It's simple. So it has a powerful effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So basically, we have the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, and we have the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. We have all these axes between the brain and the reproductive system, both men and women. What maca does is it balances out the brain portion. Okay, so that the brain operates better and sends the signal down to the reproductive system better. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Andrologia that found that men in particular that took maca on average, 40% of them ended up seeing an increase in their sex drive and overall libido. That's a pretty dramatic number, okay? Now these guys had no idea they were taking maca, so it was pretty darn obvious that there was a difference. 40% doesn't sound like much, but in the grand scheme of a clinical study, it's quite a bit. Okay, the next one is geared specifically towards men. Okay, this one is fenugreek. Okay, fenugreek is something that has a very profound effect on sex drive and testosterone levels. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Phytotherapy Research. Okay, it found that there was an 82% increase in overall sex drive after just six weeks in participants that took fenugreek. And there was a 67% increase in recovery time. Okay, showing the body was actually able to recoup itself better and recycle available testosterone and androgenic properties so that it could actually produce more of what you're trying to get out of that testosterone. So that was a very good sign. But then we can also take it one step further and take a look at fenugreek's direct impact on testosterone levels itself. Now this next study was published in the International Journal of Med Sciences. Okay, and it took a look at the impact on testosterone itself. It found that there was a 46% increase in testosterone 
in 90% of the people that were taking fenugreek. Okay, so 90% of the people in the study that were taking fenugreek saw a 46% improvement in overall testosterone. That is very, very powerful. Now, fenugreek's easy. You can find it just about anywhere. You can have uh, fenugreek spices, or you can just get fenugreek supplements on Amazon. It's pretty straightforward. All right, now let's move into the next one. We're talking about ghee, okay? Good old-fashioned ghee. It's like clarified butter, right? It's butter, but it's broken down so much more to the point where it doesn't have the lactose, and it's very, very pure and not very inflammatory like traditional butter. The interesting thing is with ghee, super good source of vitamin D, which is critical for both men and women to overall libido, okay? Very, very powerful. But additionally, the short chain fatty acids like the butyric acid actually create a really nice link between the gut and the brain that literally fuels the brain in an indirect way. This fueling of the brain has an adaptogenic-like effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary, therefore helping out that overall sex drive and libido. And of course, we have the good healthy cholesterols that are gonna support libido in the first place. By the way, all the foods that I'm talking about today are foods that you can get through my Thrive Hormone Optimization Box. Now, Thrive Market is super cool because it literally allows you to get your groceries without having to go to the grocery store. And you can get foods that you normally wouldn't be able to find at your grocery store. And they get delivered right to your doorstep. So you never have to leave the house, don't have to go to the grocery store. But the cool thing is, I've been able to create specific bundles. So I created my hormone optimization bundle that has the foods that I'm talking about so that you can just actually get them right to your doorstep. But let me show you one thing really cool. It's making Thrive Market even better. All right, so time to run into Whole Foods really quick, grab a couple quick things, and just to show you a little bit of side-by-side -side interesting stuff. First, you gotta get the baby some avocados. Seriously, that little guy loves these things. So here's what's crazy. People don't believe me that Thrive is literally cheaper than Whole Foods. So like right here, $3.99 for the Rhythm Beet Chips. Those things are super good when it comes down to improving your nitric oxide levels. Literally cheaper at Thrive. Okay, the next one is ghee, which I talk about all the time. So check this out. $13.99, $12.99, $12.99. Still keep going down the line. Okay, all 10, 11, 12, 20 bucks. Okay, then you know I'm a fan of Redmond's Real Salt, so we got this stuff. Okay, $8.99. Okay, still cheaper at Thrive than it is at Whole Foods. So pretty awesome. Okay, the next food I want to talk about is beetroot. Okay, now you can eat beets straight up, or you can have like dehydrated beets or things like that. The cool thing is beets have what is called dietary nitrate. Okay, dietary nitrate converts inside your body into nitric oxide. Okay, it gets reduced down to NO2. NO2 is simple. NO2 creates more blood flow. It cre increases your blood pressure to a certain degree, so therefore you have more blood flow to, well, you know where, so you actually can use it. Okay, that's exactly what we're trying to get out of there. Plus, you also have an anti-inflammatory component that allows the hormone optimization to really work at its best. Okay, this next one is for men specifically. Okay, you need to get your levels of zinc up. Okay, and you could take a zinc supplement. The problem is when you take a zinc supplement, you're not actually getting a true bioavailable form. Okay, you wanna get it from your foods. And one of the best ways to get it is gonna be through pumpkin seeds. First of all, they're perfectly keto friendly. They're easy to digest. They contain a lot of enzymes that we need for other cellular functions, but they're super high in zinc. You see, what ends up happening is when you're deficient in zinc, which is not that hard to be deficient in, you end up having an increase in estrogen activity. You have more estrogen receptors. So zinc kind of nullifies those a little bit. If we have more estrogen in the body, we usually have less testosterone. And more estrogen also means you're gonna hold more water. So we don't want that estradiol 1,7 or 1,7 hydroestradiol. It's the bad estrogen that is going to kill your sex drive, it's gonna kill your libido, but it's also gonna make you retain a bunch of water. Now zinc is also necessary for the conversion of androstendione to testosterone. So if we don't have zinc, that conversion can't actually happen. You don't actually produce testosterone. So pumpkin seeds are awesome. Munch on them throughout the course of the day, add them to your meals, use them in place of almonds, things like that. Again, you can get those in the Thrive Box too. Okay, and then for women, okay, no, very important that men don't do this one. Women, it's actually okay for you to have healthy organic soy options here and there. You don't wanna have a lot, but the phytoestrogens and things like edamame are actually going to help you. See, they mimic estrogen, so a lot of times what happens is you end up with a positive feedback loop. You mimic estrogen, so the body creates more estrogen receptors. More estrogen receptors mean that you have the ability to create more estrogen and have it be received of the body. Women, you want your estrogen levels to be not super high, but high enough so that you can actually have the proper function. You want a little bit more estrogen so that testosterone levels are kept lower, so you don't have those androgenic properties, okay? So you actually feel like you have a true female sex drive. Lastly, for both men and women, okay, broccoli or cauliflower, okay, simply because it has what's called methane. Now, especially for men, 
the indole methane is a component of what's called indole 3 carbonyl. So it's going to help balance out extra estrogen. Okay? It helps basically your body consume extra estrogen so it doesn't convert into bad estrogen. Now, for women, this is good too. It doesn't necessarily reduce your total estrogen. It reduces the bad form of estrogen, which therefore makes it so that you have more available hormones to actually improve your sex drive. But specifically for men, uh, DIM, which you're going to get out of broccoli and cauliflower, is very, very powerful. Women, you might want to test it out. Sometimes you have an adverse response. So eat broccoli, cauliflower for a week. If you feel like your sex drive went down, eliminate it, vice versa. So there you have it, some simple ways that you can boost your libido, some simple ways that you can get these foods at a cheaper price, but also just some overall knowledge on how your body works when it comes down to hormone optimization. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.